In this video, we're going to talk about the Rydberg equation and the Bohr model for helping explain orbitals, what those mean for molecules and atoms. So Rydberg equation was that 1 over lambda is equal to Rydberg's constant, 1 over n squared for your first and 1 over n squared for your second level. Rydberg constant is 109.678 per centimeter. So let's think about the hydrogen atom. I have electrons, and well, electron, because it's hydrogen, and it's going to be in the lowest energy. And then there are all these other possible energy levels up technically to infinity. They get closer and closer with time, Eventually, you can reach your free, though. Let's take a look. What energy would be absorbed when we went from N1 to N3? And so we're going to go from 1 to 3. What wavelength of light will this absorb? And then we can find the energy of it. Well, 1 over my wavelength is going to equal... 109,678 per centimeter. 1 over, well, N1 was our level 1, was our lower level. So 1 squared minus 1 over level 3, 3 squared, which is really going to be 1 minus 1 over 9, or 8 ninths. 8 ninths times 109678 per centimeter is going to equal 1 over lambda. This is going to be 1 over lambda is 97,491. Rearrange. My lambda is going to equal 1 over 97,491 per centimeter, which will move the centimeter up which is 1.026 times 10 to minus 5 centimeters. And remember that there's 100 centimeters in every one meter. So this is 1.026 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, or approximately 102 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which is 102 nanometers. The light necessary to be absorbed to push that electron from the 1 to the 3 is 102 nanometer light. Conversely, if you'd run an electrical current through and pushed an electron into the third level, and then it relaxed to give off light, it would give off 102 nanometers. Now, visible light ends at about 400 nanometers, so we're about a quarter of that length, four times the energy, and so this is going to be getting into the ultraviolet. Well, let's take it to the extreme. What if we push it further to the fourth, to the fifth? What if we push it all the way to the break free? Well, if we think about the equation for a minute, 1 over lambda equals 109,678 per centimeter. 1 over 1 squared minus... Well, the highest you could go, you know, if you're 10 to the you know, squared, you'd be 100. If you're 100 squared, you'd be 10,000. If you're infinity squared, you might as well just be the whole thing here goes to zero. One divided by a really large number is going to disappear. Effectively, there's nothing left, and you just have one. The further you go between orbitals, the closer to the Rydberg value you become. And so really the highest energy transition on a hydrogen is just the Rydberg constant. Rearrange it, my lambda is going to equal 1 over 109,678. 9.12 times 10 to the minus 6 centimeters. 
It's 100 centimeters and 1 meter. It's 9.12 times 10 to the minus 8 meters or 91 nanometers. So not a lot smaller. The energy to go from 1 to 3 versus 1 to break free wasn't a very big difference in energy here. Let's do one more. Let's look at 2 to 3. Let's look at a little bit of those differences in energy here. So 1 over lambda, 109.678 per centimeter. 1 over 2 squared, going up to 1 over 3 squared. This is going to be 0 0.25 minus 1 ninth. 0 0.139 or a 1 over lambda is 15 to 33 and so my lambda is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 5 centimeters or 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 7 meters or 660 nanometers. That was our 2 to 3 transition. Well, that is a lot less energetic than all of our other ones. When we've drawn the orbitals before, we have a large gap from 1 to 2, and then we have a smaller gap to 3, and a smaller gap to 4. They do tend to trail off exponentially. The visible transitions that come from our hydrogen lamp actually tend to come from things that aren't the lowest energy to some other transition. They're from a higher to a higher. If anything goes all the way to the bottom, that fall is so big, we end up in ultraviolet range outside the visible spectra. And so there are a lot of lines on the hydrogen line spectra that are outside the visible spectra. We have to use a device that can detect them. The human eye couldn't when we use a diffraction or a prism. We only noticed the transitions from other levels. Well, Rydberg's equation worked very well for hydrogen, but it just came from looking at the math. It didn't explain why. A lot of work was done by Neil Bohr and eventually came to basically the same conclusion using constants of electron charge and mass and came up with the idea of the modern orbital. And for a very, very brief time, we thought electrons were like planets around the sun. We said, hey, there's an electron, that must be n equals one, here was my n equals two, n equals three, and we drew them like this, and that the electron must be hopping between these different energy levels in order to absorb or this, however, is horribly wrong. This is not what an atom looks like. This is not what orbitals look like. Nonetheless, this is a drawing we still use because despite only being about a year-ish that we kind of thought this might be the case, it just visually works really well. And so we still tend to draw atoms this way as things circling a nucleus. Classical physics had problems with this because the electron should slowly get closer and closer to the nucleus. If you've ever rolled a penny or a quarter on those funnel-shaped things at malls, and they'd spin around and around and around to the center, they lose energy in time. In fact, that's how a synchrotron works. When we have a big magnetic setup and we spin an electron through it, using the magnets to move the electron around, it builds up energy and then it emits it as it goes around. So we emit a ton of radiation through the synchrotron, and are able to harness that for nucleosynthesis or medical applications or testing, all sorts of things. So why doesn't the electron do it on the atom? As we get into atomic orbitals, we're going to have to talk about the nature of matter. Rydberg calculations and Bohr calculations treat our electron like it jumps between orbitals. But the truth is, our electron takes the shape of an orbital. And so our next video, we'll dive a little deeper into it.
but electron orbitals are shapes. The electron itself is actually a wave. And for that, we're going to need a whole discussion on wave mechanics.